I'm Theodore Rabbit, and welcome to Lampooning Tunes. So, for this particular episode, I thought I'd look at this lovely furry gem of a certified good boy, Road Rovers. Let's roll! Now it's time to hit the road! Road Rovers! Road Rovers was released in the mid 90s in Warner Brothers' golden age, around the same time as uh, Animaniacs and Tiny Toons was also rolling the airwave. Don't worry guys, I'll get to that one. You can bet your carrots on it. The plot, as it was, sees Professor Shepard get to give up his trans dogmafire technology, which turns normal dogs into uh, canine sapiens, or buff anthros as we like to call them, uh, in exchange for his pet dog. Which, unfortunately, uh, General Pavo doesn't give him his pet dog, he just gives him a bomb instead. So, one year has passed, and our professor is pissed. So, he decides to use his trans fire technology on all the leaders of the world's dogs and turn them into road rovers, complete with silver figure-hugging uh, gear and, uh, well, buff physiques. Some fine of me is wondering how much of this was done for, you know, saving the world and how much of this was done for the professor's own personal pleasures. So don't worry if this plot sounds too dark or, you know, complicated for you, because it soon sells down into typical Warner Brothers fare of jokes and high-kicking action and a lot of puns. Oh my god, the canine puns go so thick and fast in this cartoon. The members of this canine super squad look like the cast of a choose-your-own furry dating game. And they are Hunter, the golden retriever from the good old US of A. Now, Hunter is every bit the leader and has a voice to match. But unfortunately, is a little bit naive and clueless, even when he's being chatted up. The other thing to say about Hunter is that, well, <laughs> He has a bit of a ball fetish. Blitz the Doberman, sounds like a discount Arnold Schwarzenegger, is the vain, arrogant member of the group, and unfortunately a hopeless womanizer. Even though he acts like a womanizer, he mostly talks about biting guys' butts, or tushies as he likes to call it. I'm starting to wonder whether or not he's ready to come out of the closet. Colleen, the only female in the group, makes up for being outnumbered by being a real sharp-witted, badass, ball-breaking woman. And, I won't lie, it's meant to come from the UK. Couldn't happen to a nicer maniac. And again, he might not be at the top of the list. But, I don't know about you or me, but she sounds more Australian. I can do a better accent than that for England. Uh, God blame me, Governor. Uh, could you uh, pass me that cup of tea? Um, okay, I'm no good at accents. Sorry. One of my favorite gags of this entire series, I must admit, is Blitz's desperate and quite funny attempts to try and chat up Colleen and being hopelessly shot down. It's really good. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you sitting there. I'm Colleen. Have we met? Of course. You know me. I'm Blitz. Blitz, Blitz, no, no, that's not working for me. I know, I'll give you a brand new name. Something that better suits your winning personality. Yes, from now on, let's call you Mr. Fluffy Pants. Let's not. Mr. Stuffington Fluffy Pants, or Fluffy for short. Blinky. No, that's not it. Don't tell me, I'll get it. I'm starting to hate this bit. Exile the Husky. This lovable curl tail is a real stereotype of the highest order, getting all his words mixed up, constantly talking about Mother Roger, and, uh, well, I had to say, he's still one of my favorite characters. Now, the weird thing about Exile, other than maybe Hunter, is that he's the only one with any kind of special power. He's able to, like, shoot ice beams out of his eyes and freeze people solid. I'm sorry, did I miss the memo, but can all Huskies do this? Leave me a comment underneath. Shag, the sheepdog from Switzerland. Now, looking at this guy, you'd think he would be the tank of the group, the heavy. <laughs> but he couldn't be farther from the truth. This lovable bull of fur has a huge appetite. 
and has a voice that sounds like Scooby-Doo channeling Beaker from the Muppets. Now, one thing to note about Shag is that his name, unfortunately, over here in the UK, takes on a whole new meaning, and I'm very surprised that Warner Brothers never actually picked up on this. Have they never seen Austin Powers? Listen, why don't we go in the back and shag? What? I've been frozen for 30 years, I've got to see if my bits and pieces are still working. Then we come to Muzzle. Now, Muzzle is the professor's dog scout, who was turned insane by Pavo after he was kidnapped and tried to, be, uh, tried to make experiments on him to turn him into a canine sapien. Now, Muzzle is mostly nowadays just muzzled and restrained. Nowadays though, Muzzle is mostly used by the rest of the group as their secret weapon. Wheeled in, unmuzzled, and then he goes off and does who knows what to some of the people. It's implied that uh, he even eats people at certain points. It's really dark. I have to give a shout out in this show, I won't lie, to the two bad guys. Pavo and his sidekick, The Groomer, lovely name by the way, uh, they have some amazing dialogue between the two of them, bouncing off each other. You can tell the voice actors had so much fun. Jim Cummings does a fantastic job in this show. So sadly, just like Bucky O'Hare, this show only got 13 episodes. And to be honest with you and most of the internet, it's a real mystery as to why, because it did really well. It also got shown quite a few times on, t on television and uh, more recently has a DVD box set, which is, if you get the chance, pick it up. It's fantastic. Well, it's another shame, unfortunately, and hopefully maybe Warner Brothers will dig them out of uh, hibernation to bring them back again like they have with some of their other shows. So, that was Road Rovers, and uh, I hope you enjoy the show, and hope you can join me once again for Lampooning Tunes. If you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time for another episode of Lampooning Tunes. Goodbye, everyone!